we're in a moment where you got a combination of a pandemic that's like in, a, in virus form. And then we got a vandem uh, pandemic in, uh, in kind of political policing form, right? Now, now, the virus form is still political. But when you have an interaction, sorry about this. You got an interaction between a pandemic that's basically taking like one out of 2,000 uh, African-American lives. And then you've got a policing dynamic, which has had not quite the same, uh, not the same effect, but a similar effect on black bodies. I mean, I don't know why I wouldn't be here. And um, so you saw the, the first officer get charged with uh, in George Floyd's murder, um, but the protests have only grown and there was maybe a historic level of coordinated police repression across the country. And that seems to have also only fueled protests. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so for the first time, I mean, we've seen police not just go after protesters, but we've seen police actually on purpose going after journalists, right? So those are dynamics that you would normally associate with basically the politics of a banana republic. And I think that's what people are protesting, right? People are protesting the fact that increasingly the America acts as if it's a banana republic. Right. With wealth concentrated and political power concentrated in an ethno racial capitalist state. And so in Baltimore, there was an uprising just five years ago. And a lot of people feel like not a lot has changed in those five years. Um, what do you think has been learned from these years of protests against these similar incidents? And what do you think is going to what is it going to take to actually change this well so the thing is, is uh, people have been fighting against a combination of economic violence and political violence in places like baltimore and that struggle isn't just a five-year struggle so i think the thing that we already knew was a struggle but i think the thing that people are really beginning to focus on although again i think we knew that here in baltimore is that it's really important to basically enact policies that defund the police and then that take the capital that's embodied downtown and basically redistributing it. And that takes a combination of traditional political means and not traditional political means. And then it takes a combination of like basically uh, elected officials, political parties, uh, so, uh, social movement tendencies, and then public policy. And it, and it requires it all, right? And Baltimore is interesting because it spends most per capita of any large city on this police department. Um, and it also, uh, it also, subs we've talked about this, it subsidizes large corporations to a tune of billions every year while it's, uh, you know, schools are starved for heat and, and uh, uh, AC. You talk about that as well. So, so we spend $500 million on police a year, right? So the, the, the thing I've emphasized is that by comparison, for example, we spend maybe 40, 50 million on parks and rec, right? Uh, and, and in the case of the police, it's not even like the city has a lot of the power that's, uh, that police has is given to it by state politics, not necessarily local politics. So what we have is a dying, and then most of that money is spent basically defending capital like, so most of the, a significant portion is spent in this district, and then a significant portion is spent, like, in the poorest district, the poorest area in the city where Freddie Gray was killed. So we can, it's as if we can actually see the money that should be going to Parks and Rec, the money that should be going to education, go to policing and defending capital. And that's kind of the struggle.